Hi, my name is Aramis Philip Alvarez, and I worked this summer under my faculty advisor, Dr. Michael Flynn, in the Integrated Circuits Lab. Well, I'll be speaking to you beginning with my SROP experience, and then I'll go into my research. Um, the experience is fantastic, uh, needless to say. Uh, we've uh, encountered or we're engaging in weekly seminars to uh, prepare you for graduate school, questions from the application process to uh, recommendation letters to even your academic statement of purpose. Um, uh, Mike Nazareth, uh, we call him the Mike, the man Nazareth, uh, helps you out in, uh, in engaging you in getting you involved with the College of Engineering uh, with uh, socials like ice cream socials or barbecues. And on top of that, he even took us to a Detroit Tigers game uh, with free money, $30. Can't beat that. So go out, uh, have fun, have a good time, and uh, that's what it's all about here in Michigan. But it's all about also to uh, work hard. So you work hard to play hard. The title of my research uh, was a programmable delay cell in 65 nanometer CMOS technology. Now I decided to make this whole entire uh, circuit uh, digitally. And what digital uh, means is it can only carry two states, a one or a zero. Um, so with that being said, it made it a little bit easier for me to program this device. Now what it, can this be used for? The purpose of this uh, uh, delay cell was going to be used for an analog to digital converter, ADC. And uh, what that means is um, when you have a signal coming in and it goes through several components inside a chip, a lot of times those components might run faster than others. So as they're going along the chip, data's coming in and spitting it out, going into another component and spitting it out. Um, at the very end of the circuit, you might have one component running a lot faster than the other one and the chip or whatever you're trying to get out of it, if it's a TV signal, uh, a computer screen, whatever it is, it might look like you might have some garbage data in between because not all of it is getting in at the same time. So you try to delay certain components in the chip so that way the signal at the very end all comes together all at the same time, just like a car running on all four cylinders pretty much. So digital, again, carries two states, a one or a zero. Now transistors are pretty much the fundamental uh, devices for making a chip. Um, transistors act like a switch. Uh, they're either open or closed, on or off. And every single time you send a signal through a transistor, there is something called a propagation delay. Um, small delay, a lot of times it can be in the picoseconds. Uh, obviously through technology, it, can only, it gets faster and faster. Uh, picosets, picoseconds are extremely small, so that's good. Um, and uh, as you make your components for the chip, uh, you get to uh, simulate the schematic and see how long it takes for a signal to come in and out of the chip. Now, I decided to make my uh, I schematic, you can kind of say, using what's called a, a tri-state uh, inverter. Now, what a tri-state inverter is, is it, it's an inverter, uh, but it has an extra input. As a matter of fact, I'm going to draw that here on the board. So you have, this is an inverter. This bubble means it inverts the signal. So if there's a high signal or high voltage out here, there's going to be a low signal. And if you have a low signal there, it will invert it to a high signal, pretty much. And then this extra input, what is this? This is what's called an enabler. And all it, did, all it does, it turns on this device or turns it off. So if this enabler is on, or we can say hi, this functions as follows. If this enabler is low or off, then nothing can pass through. Whatever you put in on the input, this switch acts like it's open here, and nothing passes through the inverter. So what I decided to do is make 32 of these inverters cascaded. So pretty much as follows. As you see here, I've only drawn, drawn three, but 
Reason why you want them double is because you don't want to change the signal, you just want to delay it. So obviously, one inverter changes the signal, and when you invert that signal back, it changes it back to the original state. Now in here, what you see are switches, pretty much. So there's a transistor in there, acts like a switch. So it allows the current to either go through or not to go through. And obviously, in here, these are connected through here, and this wire is connected through here. I don't want to draw that up on the board, because if not, it'll get a little too discombobulated. But these enable signals are very important. Why is that? Because what happens is these enable signals allow me to control, and this enable signal has the same input as this one. So these two are the same, these two are the same, and these two are the same. And what happens is I get to control this whole entire delay circuit depending on the inputs that I put on here. So if I put a zero, or should I say should I, if I put a one here, it allows me to turn these devices on. These devices are turned off, and the signal can go straight through. If I decided to make these here a one, and this is a one, what happens is it's going to go through this path in here and get delayed twice longer. So pretty much that's how I made the schematic for the delay circuit. Tri-state inverters. Now, how am I going to communicate with the uh, 32 inputs? Because that's going to be a whole lot of inputs to put on there. I decided to make a what's called a 5 to 32 decoder. And all that does is it communicates, depending on what kind of information you put on, um, on the uh, input, it's going to produce a certain 32 outputs. Now, why do I say 5 to 32? Well, like I said, two states. In digital, everything is done in two states. So if you have what's called one bit of information, one, you have a zero or a one. So you have two states. If you have two bits, you have another zero or one. But what happens is you can have four combinations. A zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one. Now, if you see the pattern here, every bit of information is two raised to that power. So two raised to one bit, you're going to have two outputs, or two combinations, should I say, two different types of combinations. Two to the second, which is two bits of information, you're going to get four different combinations. Two to the three, you're going to get eight. And obviously, I have five bits, five to 32, because two to the fifth is going to be 32 different combinations, which is exactly what I need for this schematic. Now, um, the layout process. Pretty much the most important part, which I figured out, and a lot of my research was done on this, is actually making the chip and putting these transistors individually on a computer software tool called Cadence. Now, the blueprint of designing the transistors is done on this program. Uh, without uh, designing it, uh, the layout, you cannot make the chip. The layout, like I said, is the blueprint for the whole entire design, so that way the chip can get fabricated uh, in the lab. And space is everything. Um, the more space you have, just like real estate, it costs a lot more money. So you try to keep everything as compact as possible inside your chip or inside of the design, I should say. So if you look at the screen, you see that I've made my chip as follows. You, everything is extremely small, so you can't really tell what's inside all that. But as you see, the outputs are on the outside. The Y0 is going all the way through Y31. And you have VN, voltage in, and V out. And pretty much, this is your whole entire delay cell in there. Uh, that took a lot of time to make, but <laughs> uh, that's another story. When you create the layout, it's a lot different from the schematic as you simulate it. When you simulate the schematic, everything's ideal, the ideal world. Nothing, you don't have anything against you, but ideally, there's a lot, a lot of things, a lot of physics that happens behind the scenes. And there's something called parasitic capacitances, which is pretty much uh, un, an unwanted capacitance that you have because of the proximity of the wires, uh, the spacing of how close they are. And capacitors act like a battery, pretty much. They charge and discharge. And when they do that, you actually prolong the delay that you want. And the delay that we wanted it to, uh, to target was around a little bit less than 55 picoseconds. Well, when I simulated the circuit, ideally, um, 
it hit around 37 to 38. But then when I made my layout and decided to simulate the same circuit, it hit around 77. That wasn't good. So after reducing um, certain distances between certain wires and uh, changing certain sizes of transistors, I got it down to around 51 to 52 picoseconds. And if you take a look at the screen, here's a graph of several delays. As you see, um, there's about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight delays showing roughly around the same uh, interval of spacing in between. And if you look at the little red and green triangle right in the middle, and if you look down below to the right where it says DX, DY, that is the difference in those two delays, which is 50.7 picoseconds. So at the very end of the day, I got it exactly where I wanted it to go. Now, why do, you, why do we have this, or why do we want to go smaller? What's the purpose of that? Purpose of this? Well, first of all, reduced cost is probably one of the biggest attractions. And the cost advantage continues to increase as technology evolves towards the production of larger and larger circuits. But most importantly, you can do more and more certain, uh, circuit functions in the same chip or even a smaller chip. Um, pretty much, I mean, uh, back, back what, in the 1960s, you had a computer that took the size of a room, and now um, they have computers where the chip itself is pretty much the size of a penny. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting there. Uh, Technology is only going to get better, and you can only put more and more functions on these chips the smaller they become to do more things. Just to give you a little bit of a uh, understanding of how small these things are, um, if you take a look at the picture that I'm showing here, there is a transistor. And if you notice, this is a, uh, it shows the separation there being 50 nanometers. And if you look to the right of it, it's an influenza virus, 100 nanometers. Pretty much this is half the size of a virus cell. And these are the transistors that I am actually uh, playing, you could kind of say, with and putting it on these chips in this design tool. So they've gone to the point where they're half the size of certain cells and they're trying to get them down um, right now to around like 14 nanometers. And every couple of years, there's something called Moore's Law, which states that you can double the amount of transistors on a chip. Now, we all know we don't know if that's going to last forever, but it's definitely lasted all the way up to this point, And it looks like it's going to last here for at least the next decade or so. My name is Aramis Philip Alvarez. I'm from the University of Florida. And my project title was a programmable delay cell using 65 nanometer CMOS technology.